Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord, Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, 
but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, Merry Christmas. I love Christmas morning for many reasons. I, I, I often remember the Christmas mornings I spent in New York City. And, and if you've ever been to Manhattan, you know that constant noise, constant noise, mostly due to traffic on the city streets that seems never ending. But on Christmas morning, it's quiet. There is an unusual calm as the normal hustle and bustle of the sound chaos is quieted. And the normal Christmas worry and concern of the season, have I done what I needed to do to make Christmas happen, abates. This year, of course, it's a lot different. There, there, there is a different kind of chaos in the world. While most of us didn't have the holiday parties and the usual days and nights out shopping amidst large crowds, there is still an underlying pressure and stress for everyone this holiday season in a different way. The quiet of the streets is a little bit more common now and not just on Christmas day. The one day of the year where over the entire earth people realize at least the power and presence of love and good in the world. And the focus is meant to be on peace, even if it's subconscious underneath all the normal business and the chaos. Well, this year we, we aren't out and about and the stress and chaos is a, a little bit more internal. What does John have to tell us about chaos in the gospel reading today? Well, I don't think he could ever envision what Christmas has become to us in the 21st century nor the fears and struggles of a pandemic in 2020. But the gospel speaks to us just as vibrantly today as it will continue to do so, hopefully, in every age to come. Now, John's gospel is different from the other three, and it's been used as the basis for much of Christian theology and teaching. John was a fisherman called by Jesus to be a fisher of people, he is sometimes referred to as John the Evangelist, because that's what spreading the good news, the gospel is. It is evangelism. And it is what he did in his gospel. So again, what does John's gospel have to do with the chaos and the busyness of this time or the anxiety of this time? What John gives us today is a little poetry. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. John is often accused of being a little out there and cosmic, but I find his poetry very welcome today. John's writing style is a welcome change over the, over the left brain worries and activities of this past year, all the reorganization of, of things, the organizing and planning, the logistics for a different way of life. How am I gonna do this now? How am I gonna do this now, right? an alternative way to do business, the sometimes depressing way we have had to educate our children on Zoom, the part of our brain that had to do all of that reconfiguring, the reconfiguring and organization of our livelihoods and survival, that part of our brain is a little bit tired, tired of the lists. And even the stories we've been hearing about in the gospel passages leading up to Christmas, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of doing. Mary does this, Joseph did that, Herod did this, the wise men came, then this happened, then this, then this. And now today we have come to the more poetic style of John to give us a break from the logistics of it all. It's as if John is saying, sit back today, 
I know what I'm saying sounds confusing or strange or hard to believe, but let the words of my gospel message flow over you, marinate in them, let go of the logistics, the how and the why and the what, let go of the fear and the anxiety, the restructuring today of all days. Just let the poetry of the word wash over you because now we don't have to do anything. It's not about us today. It's not about our journey to the manger. It's not about a cast of characters witnessing the birth. It's not our about our identity in all of this. We have, maybe we've been Mary or we've been a little bit Joseph this season. Maybe we're a shepherd or we think of ourselves as a wise man or Herod. It's not about us and our identification with the story today. It's about Jesus. Christmas Day is about Jesus. John tells us that Jesus is the word. What does that mean? The Greek word for this is logos, and it's a concept, a word that would have resonated with a Greek audience and possibly to a Jewish audience who was versed in the philosophies of the day. Logos meant reason or that which orders the chaos. Often happening through words and through speech, this word is used. And boy, are we ready for some reason, for some chaos ordering. And John is telling us that no matter the era, the decade, no matter the problems of the current day, Jesus is the way to order the chaos. John rewrites the creation story in Genesis here. You all know it, in the beginning, right? Remember that in Genesis, God orders the chaotic waters. God speaks creation into being. God says, let there be light, and there was light. And well, you know the rest. John's poetry tells us that Jesus Christ is the organizing force. Jesus is the logos, the word made flesh, the very essence of the created order come to live among us who has been there from the beginning. But at the birth of Jesus, only now, only now do we see, really see, because at the manger, God has been made visible to us in the person of Jesus. God says, let there be light a second time. God recreates creation and Jesus Christ is the ordering principle, the word who comes to us in the flesh to calm the chaos. John's message is, a timeless, is timeless and it, it speaks to us today, no matter our anxieties. So focus on Jesus today, on this Christmas day, as the organizer, the doer, the one who transforms the dark waters of our hearts and souls by the saving, cleansing waters of our baptism. So yes, today is about Jesus and who he is. But actually, I did misspeak. It is also about us as well. Because remember, nothing ever separates us from the love of God, according to scripture. It's about us too, because we are part of this new creation story. So we can rest well today because John says of Jesus, to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. We are all of us children of God, not by blood, but by adoption. And when you adopt the child, there are a multitude of legal requirements. There's also a time of usually up to a year before the adoption is finalized by the courts. And there's always that chance that within that time, something is going to fall through. There, there might be a legal snafu that will remove this child that you have grown to invest your heart and soul into, that it will be taken away. It's not till you go to family court, until you and the judge sign the papers, that you can rest assured that the child's membership into the family can never be taken away. In fact, it's often the case where the child receives a certificate of membership that says they have membership in, in the such and such family, and it's signed by a judge. And it's a glorious day in family court when that happens. John tells us that the legal papers have been signed by our faith, our baptism, our journey to receive the baby at the manger as the logos, the word made flesh, 
granting us membership into the family of God. So in this quiet, poetic, though granted difficult time, let the chaos be done. Invest in the quiet of the day by saying, Jesus is now the organizing force in my life. When you wake up in the morning, maybe start the day with Jesus is now the organizing force in my life. Let the word wash over you and allow the light that has now come into the world on this Christmas day to burn brighter and brighter in your hearts. All of us here at St. Edmunds wish you a peaceful, hopeful, light-filled, and very Merry Christmas Day. May the blessings bestowed upon us all become a blessing to others. Amen. Let us pray for the coming of peace into the world, into our church, and into our home, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, as we celebrate the morning sun, which brought the feast of the birth of the Holy Child, call forth the child from within each of us. Cause us to wonder and rejoice again in this most ancient feast. In joy, we pray to you. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. With the shepherds, we come to the birth of Christ, seeking a simple celebration where the greatest gift will be ourselves given to you, our God, and to each other. In peace, we pray to you. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. As the Magi came bearing gifts, may we this Christmas gift one another with the gold of charity, the myrrh of kindness, and the incense of prayer. In love, we pray to you. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. 
made the star of Bethlehem, which shone brightly over the first manger, stand guard over our city, our church, and our homes, filling them and the whole earth with light, peace, and healing. In hope, we pray to you. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy birth, you give hope to all the world. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And, and also, also with, with, with you. you. Peace to everyone who's tuning in with us this Christmas morning. I wish each and every one of you a very Merry Christmas Day on behalf of the clergy and the staff here at St. Edmunds. It has truly been a difficult year for everyone, everyone around the world. And so we give thanks today for all our gifts and blessings and we praise God for uh, the gift of this holy day. So join us every Sunday on YouTube and Facebook and check out our website at stedmunds.org, S-A-I-N-T-E-D-M-U-N-D-S dot org. And may the glory of this day abound in your hearts into the new year and always. May Almighty God, whose own Son took our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your hearts with the light of holiness. Amen. Amen. May God, whose holy angels proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you peace and favor. Amen. 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 May the blessing of the eternal majesty, the incarnate word and the abiding spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.